Welcome to challenge 10, where I'll be showcasing my workflow to recreate this 3D object into soft space. It's based on a box that has several cuts into it. It has two cuts at the top corners, and it also has a slanted cut and a rectangular hole that goes through the center. As always, I ask myself, which is the best side to start off on? And it's uh, the side that has the greatest degrees of freedom or the more complexity. What helps me decide that is to is to imagine I'm holding the object in front of a torch. And if I shine the torch on one side, that creates a shadow that looks more complex than the other sides, then that is the side I would start with. And in this case, it's the side closest to us here. So let's head into soft space. First thing I'm going to do is just sketch that side using the line segments tool. And it doesn't have to look perfect to begin with. I constrain these lines now to be horizontal and vertical. I'll put in some distance constraints now. So this is 26 millimeters and I'll just rearrange that. Bring this point closer to here. I'm making sure the top line is also horizontal. This height is 26 millimeters and this one's 16.7 millimeters. Before we move on, notice in the uh, technical drawing we have, we've got at most three significant figures. That's 16.7, but we've got one decimal place. So I'll change the decimal places now in here. I'll go to configuration and I think I already changed it, but I'll show you how to do it. I'll then go down to digits after decimal points to show. Uh, you click on change and you type one there because we only want one decimal place. And having done that, you just click home again to go back to your workflow. The width of this line is five millimeters and we've got three degrees of freedom. We've got some movement here and also the sketch can move in 2D. So we need to sort this out first. If we look at the diagram, we see that we can draw a line from this corner all the way down to the bottom where it says 11 millimeters down here. We can do that now and I'll convert this line into a guideline by either clicking here or clicking G on the keyboard. I need to constrain this point to be on this line. So I'll select them both and click constraint point online. Now we should have two degrees of freedom left. And that's because I can move the whole thing now in the plane. Let's anchor it by selecting any point and the origin and clicking here. Okay, zero degrees of freedom. Let me just double check this, make sure everything looks okay. Okay, let's extrude the model now and give this a depth of 53 millimeters. And turn it around for you to have a better look at. I think we can start now with the two cuts at each corner. I'll create a new work plane, selecting these two lines and that point and clicking here. Using the line segments tool now, I'm going to strain the line to be on top of the previous contour line and along this one. Now I'll cut across and then up. Now I want this line to be horizontal. Uh, by clicking here. And if you remember in one of the previous uh, videos, I did say that if you don't see a H next to a line, uh, then it's not horizontal. Um, well, this one here is horizontal because the line underneath it in the previous sketch is horizontal. If I clicked on it and tried to make it horizontal, I would get an error message here saying redundant constraints. And that's because soft space tries to teach you to use the minimum amount of strains possible, control and Z. And now we have zero degrees of freedom, so we can extrude the model. And in the properties panel, we click difference. And the depth of this cut has to be 11 millimeters. Now, my gut feeling is telling me there may be a better way of doing this in soft space than repeating the process on the other side uh, due to the symmetry involved here. If that's the case, please let me know in the comments section or any suggestions I have. That would be greatly appreciated. So anyway, for now, I'll do the same thing on the other side, creating a new work plane, trying not to snap your contour line on top of any points down here. So I'll click on this point first, drag it over. That line needs to be horizontal. With zero degrees of freedom, we can now extrude this and clicking here in the properties panel, taking a difference and constraining the depth to be 11 millimeters. So our current work plane is highlighted up here, but you can see that we're getting there. The next thing I'm going to work on is the uh, cut that goes at a slanted angle. I'll select the new work plane. I'll select these two lines and that point. And now I'll select the rectangle tool. As you know, I don't like to snap the rectangle tool on any lines or points. Um, that's because it helps me constrain it myself. Uh, you can see now the rectangle is occluded and to show anything that's occluded, you click this button here. 
We know that the distance from this point to this line is seven millimeters and the same thing on the other side. And now I can constrain this point to be on this line by clicking here, constrain points on line. We've got one degree of freedom left and that's because we can adjust the height of this rectangle. Let's constrain it to be um, on top of the bottom line like this. Zero degrees of freedom. We need to extrude, but take a cut now towards the camera. So we'll click the extrude button. We have an error down here, but we're taking the difference. And now what I can do is click and drag. I'll just give it a, a depth of 20 millimeters. Okay, it's taking shape. I'll just click here so you can see it better. The final thing we need to work on now is the hole that goes through the center of the object. If we look on the technical drawing, we see that when the hole comes through the object, by the time it's hit the face at an angle, it looks like we have a square hole. But at the back of the object where we we'll create the hole, uh, it's not a square. Let me first create a new work plane at the back of the object. So I'll select these two lines and that point. And this is now looking at the back of the object. So you can rotate it, you can see it better. And click W on your keyboard to take you back. Select the rectangle tool again. And I'll try not to snap it on any lines or points. And I know that the width of it has to be 17 millimeters. I don't know the height of it, but we'll come to that in a second. Next thing I need to do is constrain the position of the rectangle to be in the middle of the object. My preferred way of doing that is to click on the point tool, click on the work plane and select the point and this line and click M to make put this point at the midpoint of the line. I could have selected this line if I wanted, but I chose to select this one. Let's do it again. I'll click P on a keyboard or you can click here. I'll select that point on this line this time and click M on the keyboard. Now what I can do is I can constrain these two points to be vertical to each other. And that's reduced the uh, degrees of freedom now to two. And that's because I can move it up and down as well as adjust its height. Let's add some more constraints. Let's work out the height of the rectangle first. We could draw a right angle triangle here with a 17 millimeter line being the hypotenuse. In order to get the angle here, 51.1 degrees, what I did was I went back to my first sketch in the properties panel. I can click on the first radio button there and then click W on the keyboard. The hypotenuse is somewhere along this line. If I click on that guideline and this line and then click on this constraint button, it'll actually tell me the value of the angle, which is 51.2 seven degrees but it's 51.1 to three significant figures and if i head back into my current sketch and then click w on the keyboard that length of 13.2 millimeters is this line here that's brought our degrees of freedom down to one and that's because i now need to constrain the height of this object the diagram doesn't tell me what height this rectangle is above this line but I can calculate it from looking at the front of the object again. We can draw another right angle triangle this time, but now with a hypotenuse of 24 millimeters, which is the distance from this corner down to the bottom of the object. So instead of 17, I now type 24 millimeters, and that'll give me a value of 18.7 millimeters. So I'll select this point and this line and hit constraint distance and type 18. 7, and I'll tidy it up a bit. Then we can now extrude this sketch in the properties panel, click difference, and I can constrain this point onto this surface by clicking here, constrain points on plane. Go back into the properties, click home and then hide everything. And if you think that looks a bit strange, it's because we're in an orthographic view. So I can click on the view menu at the top and go down to use perspective projection. And now that'll look more like what we have down at the bottom right hand corner. I've learned a lot making these 10 challenges and there were two main reasons for them. The first was to showcase my workflow in solving them. And my workflow may not be the optimal workflow. For example, in this case, it took me five sketches. If you were able to complete Complete this in less than five sketches. Please share your ideas in the comment section. Secondly, I wanted to showcase Solve Space. I'll be creating some new videos for some other tech and using them for some of my personal projects. So I'll see you soon. Bye.